Thanks, Steve. Um, as you know, I'm Peter from the Cat Music Industry Commission. Uh, the Commission just said you understand the main focus is to look at the commercial and economic aspects of uh, the industry, may we call it that, but certainly the music sector within the creative industries. Uh, we look at a creative economy is something that a lot of people talk about around the world these days. So we look at it as a holistic creative industry or economy and then focus obviously on music and how music plays in that economy. So I suppose to be a bit more hardcore about it, uh, one needs to understand what are the revenue streams in the music business, if, uh, if any. Um, and there are really three primary forms of income or revenue, revenue drivers I suppose. The first one and the one that's grown and the biggest worldwide is about 36% of all revenue worldwide comes from live music. Uh, and then recorded music. Recorded music currently is around about 33, 34% and diminishing. And we'll talk a little bit about that because it's starting to reinvent itself again as a revenue stream. And then the smallest currently but the fastest growing revenue stream in the music sector is what we call SYNC, uh, which is music for film, television and computer games. Um, so that's the sort of, and that's currently around about 17% of the slice internationally, and that's growing at a tremendous rate. I mean, over the last three years, it's grown by about 5%. Um, so that's where the people are earning the money. That's where the money is in the business, and then of course there are a lot of secondary sort of income streams uh, and support services around the music industry. Uh, but music today is, uh, and Adam mentioned the record companies and record contracts and those kind of things very briefly. There's not much of that around anymore. Uh, the music businesses today are very much a do-it-yourself industry. Uh, DIY and even the big acts around the world, uh, Radioheads and all these guys, Coldplay, they're all really independents. Uh, the independent or the indie music business, I could really, when I got into distribution many years ago, I could never understand the definition of an indie or an independent. You know, what makes the guy a major and what makes you independent. Uh, but we know that the major record companies are really Sony, uh, Warner Brothers, Universal, and do also still around. I think there are about four of the BMG doesn't exist anymore. Um, interesting enough, just to show you how the recorded music industry has changed, there was a, a music company in South Africa many years ago run by a chap called Clive Calder. And he sold his business to BMG Records at the time for an astronomical amount of money, uh, the small little recording business in South Africa. Uh, five years ago, Sony bought 50% share in BMG, the company that had bought Clive Calder's business for 50%, half of what they actually BMG paid for Clive Calder's little business. And 18 months ago, Sony bought the remaining 50% of BMG shares for half again of what they paid for the first half three years previously. So that just shows you how value in the recorded music industry really diminished and going down. What is great, if we can just talk quickly about the recorded business, is that people are now finding new business models around recorded music. Uh, the big advantage in the old days, and I don't want to step on anybody's toes, uh, but we used to go about trying to protect our copyright and for anything. You know, we, we hated the pirates or the file sharers that they prefer to be called these days. Um, and we did anything to, to get our music legalized, protected, stop copying, all that kind of stuff. Um, today, music is for free, really, uh, in many instances. The CD's dead, as we know, and it's dying, and it's almost forgotten. South Africa still has a few CDs around, but you don't see too many CDs around these days. We don't really sell physical music. But the, the fact that music, or the notion that music is for free, where we were selling CDs, you protect it, and maybe you'd sell a thousand copies, if you're lucky, you'd sell 25,000, you'd go gold, and you'd, you'd make some money. Today, instead of selling 25,000 CDs, they say you give it away for free, and now you reach 20 million people, We can potentially is. And therein lies a new business model, because if you have a fan base, who are interested, 20 million people out there, that want to listen to your music, all of a sudden the corporates can use that brand association with your music to reach the target market. So there's four kinds, so instead of selling your music, you actually get sponsorships a lot more easily these days than what you did 20, 30 years ago. Uh, corporates focus tremendously. I spent eight years of my life in West Africa. It was an incredible experience. There's no formal music distribution in West Africa. And I was based in Lagos, which is probably you know, the, the, the 
the hub of piracy in the world, if you like, uh, and extremely innovative people. And I very quickly understood it's, it's not that bad. There's actually a whole new revenue stream or channel to get your music out there if you can actually work with these file sharers or these pirates. And all the big corporates in, in, in West Africa, they either, either use music or they use football or soccer to promote their products. So there's a massive amount of money that's coming through sponsorships and those kind of things. Those guys don't know what it means to sell records <clears throat> because there's no formal record industry. So it changed my mindset about the so-called thing of, of free music or music should be for free. Uh, the result is now as well there's much more music out there than what there ever was before because music is for free. So a lot more people have access to music now that if they hadn't paid for it, never would have had. So I'm not saying we should just be giving our music away, but certainly I think the potential, I was lucky enough to be one of those guys that lived through the 60s. And for me, I get that same sort of feeling. The whole music business now is being reinvented almost. It's almost the 60s all over again, which is for me, it's very exciting.